Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Fried, and welcome to day one of Plant Miss. I'm super excited today to make a video all about the amazing Facebook Marketplace finds that we have filled our first home with. Every single time I share a story on Instagram or a video that has something in the background, I get so many DMs asking where I got the individual pieces of furniture from, and 99.9% .9 of the time, it's Facebook Marketplace. So I am super excited to take y'all along with me on a little tour around our house and show you all of our individual finds. And I'm also gonna share my top five tips for finding amazing pieces on Facebook Marketplace. Now, caveats before we get into this, I am not an expert, if one can even be a Facebook Marketplace expert, but I do have a lot more experience now than I did even six months ago. So I'm going to share some things that I've learned with all of you, and hopefully they are at least somewhat helpful. Also, if you have any other tips or experiences with Facebook Marketplace that you feel would be valuable to other people watching this video, please leave those in the comments down below so we can all snag even more awesome deals on amazing furniture. Let's get into it. I should also add for anyone who just stumbled upon this video who isn't necessarily familiar with me that I'm Canadian. So all of these amounts are in Canadian dollars and also of course my experience with Facebook Marketplace will be influenced by the fact that my experiences take place in Canada. Okay let's do it. So the very first piece we found for our new home is one of my absolute favorites. It is such a gem of a find and I am obsessed with it. It is this absolutely gorgeous mid-century sideboard. Can't even get over how beautiful this thing is. It is vintage from the 60s, absolutely stunning and in such good shape. It's basically perfect. So this piece I happened to come across on Facebook Marketplace and it was initially listed I believe around $500 and I showed my husband Jason and both of us were immediately like, oh my god, that is beautiful. That needs to be in our house. But... 500 felt a little steep. So we held off and I kept dreaming about it. I kept going back to check on it and worrying that someone else would buy it. And one of the many times I went back to check on it, I noticed that the price had been dropped down to $300. And I snapped that up. I didn't even message my husband. There was no time. I sent an offer to the seller for 300 and they accepted and we went to pick it up. I think later that day or maybe the next day. Of course, as soon as I sent the offer, I immediately texted my husband and told him about it. And he he totally agreed that it was the right call, that $300 was a great deal for this. And we went to pick it up and struggled to carry it down the stairs and load it into our vehicle and bring it home. But so worth it. This is like the crown jewel of our home right now. I'm obsessed with it. It's so beautiful and it's perfect to display all of our prettier dinnerware. So that whole experience brings me to my first tip, which is to check back often. Not only are people always adding new pieces literally all day every single day and you never know when something will be added that is just right for you, but also people are impatient and if whatever they've posted hasn't sold for a while, people are likely to reduce the price so they can just get it out of their lives and not have to deal with it anymore. And there's a chance that something that you've fallen in love with that's a bit out of your budget might be reduced. And if you're checking at least once a day, you might just be able to snag it before anyone else does. Especially if you're looking for something really specific, say a pair of nightstands of a particular style, then I definitely recommend doing a search on Facebook Marketplace at least once a day using any of the possible keywords that could relate to what you're looking for. For example, if you're looking for mid-century furniture, which is one of our favorite styles of furniture, then you're going to want to look for mid-century modern, mid-century, MCM, teak furniture, vintage 60s furniture, walnut furniture. So any of the common materials or different names and terms that could apply to that style or the time period when it was produced, all those things can help you find what you're looking for because you never know how someone's going to describe what they're posting. You can even search specific names of designers if you know them and if you're looking for something even more specific. And this doesn't have to take a long time. I would say most days when I check Facebook Marketplace, I'm on there for less than five minutes. And I bet all of you out there are spending more than five minutes scrolling on Instagram or Twitter or Reddit or TikTok or whatever your social media of choice is every single day. That is, if you're anything like me, you won't even miss those five minutes. If you can't manage to check in daily, I would at least recommend you take a look a couple times a week because you really don't know when the perfect thing will be posted. And and depending on where you live, things can go pretty quick. 
So moving on to our next find, and our next find is actually a bundle because we bought a bunch of different pieces from the same person. So I was looking at two separate items that I didn't even realize were put up by the same person, this large mirror and this dresser. So the dresser I thought would be perfect for our guest room, which is where it is right now, sitting in the closet. Because that room is relatively small and we have a king size bed in there, there's really no space in the main part of the room for any kind of furniture other than maybe a pair of small nightstands. So we were looking for a dresser that was on the narrower and taller side, but still had pretty spacious drawers so that if someone came to stay for a little while, they would have space to put all of their stuff so they could just slide their suitcase under the bed. And this dresser seemed perfect. If I'm remembering correctly, I think it was listed at $200. And I was also looking at this mirror, which was listed for $30 dollars and it is ginormous. Mirrors, as you might know, tend to be ridiculously expensive. So I love looking for mirrors on Facebook Marketplace. And I just knew as soon as I saw this one that I had to snag it. Beautiful walnut frame, huge size and only 30 bucks. It was a no brainer. So I reached out to the seller and my husband and I drove out to their house to take a look at these two pieces and we were happy to grab them. But while we were there, we discovered this seller also had listed a little radio that she had sort of upgraded and painted that my husband husband had been looking at and she was also listing this beautiful table that you can see behind me, this mint green. It's actually a sewing table that folds out and the sewing machine would have sat inside, although there is no sewing machine now. So we realized very quickly that the seller had exactly the same style as us in furniture and we ended up going for a big bundle deal. So we got the dresser, the radio, the giant mirror and this side table and we got all of it for 500 bucks, which is kind of wild. The radio is sitting in our family room right now, which is the only room we have done nothing to other than replacing the floors. The plan for this room is for it to be like a cozy family room, movie room, and likely the radio will stay in here when we actually make it into a usable room. But right now it's basically storage. The large mirror is sitting over our fireplace right now, but the plan is actually to use it to replace the frameless mirror that's in our main bathroom upstairs. The mirror is actually a perfect fit to go over the vanity and it just looks so much nicer than the frameless mirror that's sort of attached to the wall by clips. Just really upgrades the whole look. The dresser is sitting in the closet in the guest room just as we had planned. It's a perfect fit in there and the side table is in the background of every video. I love this little thing. The next find was actually my husband's doing. He saw this mirror posted for 30 bucks. Again, what is with us finding mirrors for 30 bucks? This is another nice big mirror. And at first we didn't really have a plan for it. He just liked it. He liked the frame and it was a good price. So we just picked it up on the way home one day, but we quickly realized that it was kind of a perfect size to fit over what we were using as an entryway cabinet in our foyer. So this has now become our entryway mirror, although as you can see in the footage, we haven't hung it up on the wall yet. It is ridiculously heavy, so we are going to get some really heavy duty <laughs> mounting equipment so it doesn't fall off the wall and smash everywhere. But I'm really excited for when we get that done because it's just the perfect size and it really makes that entry area, which is pretty small, feel a lot brighter and airier. Moving on to my next tip, which is to expand your search. Small towns can have some really unique pieces that don't tend to go nearly as quickly. So you have some time to mull it over and they tend to be priced more reasonably because there's just less competition. But they also likely have a lot less selection and options, especially if you're looking for something more specific. Big cities, on the other hand, have a huge amount of selection. They have so many people selling and they're likely to have multiple options for whatever you're looking for, even if it's highly specific. But on the other hand, there are a lot more people trying to find those pieces so things can go really quick and prices tend to be higher because there is more competition. Try expanding your search bubble as big as it'll go on the app to really see what's in your area and even changing your location to a nearby city within a couple hours or whatever's reasonable for you to see what's on offer. We've picked up items as far as a three hour drive away from our home, but depending on the piece, we would easily drive many more, but it just depends on you. There are many factors there, but expanding your search can really help. Moving on to our next series of finds, these pieces came as a set. And this is another one of my absolute favorite finds. So we were looking for a dining table for a really long time because we actually have never had a proper dining table in our entire life together, which is a little embarrassing considering we've been together since 2014 and got married in 2016. We have not had a proper dining table until this year. <laughs> 
But moving into our house, we finally had a proper dining room and it was time. And we really wanted to have a table that could at least seat six people so we could have friends and family over, have them come stay with us and also have dinners together and play board games at our table and just have a great time. So I was scouring Facebook Marketplace multiple times a day for a good dining table. And honestly, I was not impressed. <laughs> the options were not great and the prices were pretty expensive for what was on offer. But one fateful day, I came across a listing for a beautiful dining set from the 19. 40s. And when I tell you that I lost my mind, <laughs> obsessed, this was a beautiful dining set, an expandable table, six chairs, five regular and one captain's chair with the arms, a sideboard or a buffet, and a cabinet. And they were so beautiful, y'all. These pieces really felt like they had a lot of art deco inspiration, especially the cabinet with the glass on the front. Lots of curves and fluting, those little details, but also a simplicity that kind of makes it feel timeless. So as you can tell, I was obsessed and the pieces were not in perfect shape. They'd definitely seen some wear over the years. They had been used every single day since the 1940s. So they'd seen some things in their time, but listed at $600, that was just a ridiculously good price for what we were getting. And looking at how unique and beautiful the pieces were, I just knew we had to go for it. So I showed Jason, he was really excited about it. It was kind of a drive. I think this one was about just over two hours away, but we figured out a time, we drove out to pick them up and we actually ended up having to do it in two trips because we couldn't fit everything into our vehicle at once. So luckily the seller was really understanding and let us come back like a week and a half later for the cabinet. This is such a beautiful set. And as you can see in our home, we broke it up because we really wanted to include that first piece that we found, that sideboard in our dining room and I kind of like breaking it up a little bit so that it's not the whole set in the room, making it feel too matchy-matchy. But the sideboard from the set is such a perfect entryway cabinet. Y'all, the size is perfect. It has this huge drawer that expands the whole length of it that we have filled to the brim with our hats and gloves and scarves. The two doors at the bottom open to one big cabinet. Right now, I just keep my purse in there, but my plan is to get a waterproof mat that will fit in the base, probably something I'll cut to size so we can keep our most worn shoes in there. And then the top on the two sides is stationary, but the middle piece lifts up and it used to be a spot to store cutlery, but it's perfect for us to be able to store our glasses and keys. The table is beautiful. I'm obsessed with it. We leave it permanently extended with the butterfly leaf open. It's got a little bit of wear on the top, just like the chairs have some wear on them, especially on the legs, but we love them. As obsessed as I am with the table and the chairs, I am the most obsessed with the cabinet, which is kind of funny to me because it wasn't even on my radar at first. My main focus was the table and the chairs. But when we saw the cabinet in person, I was immediately obsessed. And it's now become my favorite piece by far from the set. It's become our replacement for a built-in pantry that we got rid of when we were working on the kitchen. And it's actually got more storage space than the original tiny little pantry had. And it's just so beautiful. The glass with the curved details on it, the curved top, the big drawer along the bottom. I love the shape of the legs, which match the sideboard. And every time I go in to grab some pasta or some spices or whatever I'm grabbing from the pantry, I just think to myself how beautiful it is. It's just a treat to use and a treat to look at and have in our home. This whole set was definitely an amazing find and I'm so glad we went for it. The next piece my husband found, we were looking for a coffee table for a while and he found this piece on Facebook Marketplace listed at $100 and we loved the shape of it. We really liked that it was painted black along the sides and the bottom. The person who was selling it had taken it on as a project and it was their first time refinishing something. So the top could use a little bit of work. We'll probably refinish that eventually, but it's been working really well for us as a nice little coffee table. Time for the next tip, which might be a little bit obvious, but considering how often I see it mentioned in listings, maybe it isn't so obvious. Don't send sellers the pre-written message through Facebook Messenger. I can't tell you the number of times that I've seen a listing where the seller wrote, won't respond to default message, won't respond to, is this available? If it's up, it's available. So many sellers are putting that out there because I can imagine they're getting <laughs> a lot of people who just do the lowest effort thing, which is to hit send on the message that's already 
already typed in without adding anything of their own. A lot of sellers, even if they don't add any of those disclaimers in their listing, probably will ignore messages like that because it just feels super low effort and like it's going to be a waste of their time, which it might be. So I would highly recommend using that backspace button until you get back to hi, whatever the seller's name is, comma, and then you can add your own message. Be polite, be communicative. If you have a legitimate question about something, for example, there's no picture of the back, there are no dimensions, and you're curious, then ask your question so that they know that you're actually interested, you're engaged enough to write your own question. If you don't have a question and you're just interested in buying it, then you could send something along the lines of, hi seller, would you be available on Saturday? Or would you take e-transfer for this? Or whatever. Anything other than the default message so that they know that you are legitimately interested and a real person. <laughs> Moving on to our next find, and this is something we had been looking for for a while, and that is a dresser for our bedroom. The way that our bedroom is laid out, there are only so many places you can put furniture, and the only place that really made sense for a dresser was under the large window that's in our bedroom, which meant that we had to find a lower, wider dresser, which limited our options somewhat, especially because, shocker, we were looking for a true vintage mid-century dresser. So we had both been kind of scouring Facebook Marketplace for a couple months at that point, looking for a low, wide, mid-century dresser that was not completely destroyed, but also not ridiculously expensive or refinished into colors we didn't like, which is very common. <laughs> so we've been looking for a while and we finally came across this beautiful nine drawer dresser that came with a matching mirror for $300 which felt like a steal. The dresser is an amazing shape. It has a couple little spots of wear at the top, but nothing significant. And since I plan on styling things on top of it, you won't even be able to see those. The drawers are in great shape. They all move really smoothly. The legs are in great shape. The fronts of the drawers look great. We loved that it hadn't been refinished or painted. It just looked perfect. While we knew we weren't gonna use the mirror attached to the dresser as it was meant to be, because obviously we have <laughs> windows above it, it was basically free. And the mirror turned out to be a great great find as well because we realized that it was a perfect fit for our ensuite bathroom. So as you can see right now, it's leaning against the wall again in our family room, aka our unfinished storage room, but it will be going in our ensuite eventually and I'm really glad that we ended up picking it up along with the dresser. The next find was something I had been looking for for my family room for a while, which was a secretary desk. I've always loved secretary desks. I think they are so cute to the fact that they open up and they have all the little like storage areas and the workstation, but that you can fold it away and kind of close it up and keep your mess <laughs> hidden away. I also just wanted kind of another spot to film in my filming room that wasn't this spot that I have set up or the table where I film my bullet journal videos over there. So I have been looking at secretary desks for a while and a lot of them were pretty pricey, $500 up, which felt a little much for something that wasn't so much a need as a want. <laughs> so I kept looking until I found this one, which was listed at $250. At first I was hesitant because of the white paint, but I loved the interior of the actual desk section when it was open. I thought it was so beautiful. And when I looked at more photos, I didn't mind so much the white paint because it was more rustic looking. And of course knew that at some point, if I wanted to, I could refinish it and bring it back to its natural wooden glory. I also really loved the drawers that it had for extra storage because I have so many little props and things that I have to keep around me and I loved the idea that this could be another area to film but it could also store a bunch of the random little things that I always have in my filming room and it fits so perfectly right there in the corner. I'm looking at it right now and it looks beautiful. <laughs> $250 I felt was a pretty good price for it. I probably could have negotiated it lower, but I really liked it and I didn't want to miss out on it, so I didn't risk it. And I felt a little self-conscious. I hate negotiating, so I didn't. But that brings me to my next tip, which is negotiate if appropriate. I know it's hard. I understand. I'm so bad at it, but you can really get some amazing deals if you're willing to try negotiating for them. In my experience, there are some really easy tells for whether or not a seller will be willing to negotiate with you. The first indication is if something has been up for a while. There's no harm in reaching out and offering a lower price. It's possible that they've been considering lowering the price. If you come in and offer 50 bucks less, 
hundred bucks less, depending on where the item is priced, of course. They might just decide to go for it and sell it for what they can get for it, get it off their hands, not have to deal with it anymore. Another amazing indication is if the listing includes OBO, which stands for or best offer. In that case, they are clearly stating that this is the price they would like, but they will also take the best offer. So they are opening the door for you to negotiate, to offer what you think it's worth or what you're willing to pay. And you never know, they might be willing to go lower than you might've thought. I've also had success getting bundle discounts. If you notice you're saving more than one piece from a seller, you can always reach out to them and tell them that you're interested in more than one piece. How would they feel about giving you a bundle deal? In my personal experience, offering a price that's not too far from what's listed has given me the best results. Of course, you can go big, but you might have to go home. <laughs> the more aggressive you are with negotiating, the more likely you are to turn off the seller, in which case they might just walk away and not want to sell to you at all. If you're okay with potentially losing out on something, then you can go for that. But I find if I'm getting to the point where I'm negotiating on something, I've already kind of gotten attached. <laughs> so I tend to be a little bit on the gentler side in terms of negotiation, like my next piece, which is a great example. This beautiful rust colored wingback chair was originally listed at 225 and the price had been reduced to 190 since I'd saved it. So I reached out to the seller and said, hey, would you take 150 for this chair? And she immediately agreed. So it worked out great. I was only offering $40 less than she listed it at, although of course that was $75 less than the original listing price. But she clearly was motivated to sell. She'd already reduced the price. It had been up for a while and I didn't offer too far off from what she was asking for and she was happy to sell it. So try negotiating, especially if you're on a budget, you can get some amazing deals that way, but it is nerve wracking. I totally understand and I'm definitely no expert when it comes to negotiating. Several times I thought about negotiating on a piece we got and backed out of it because I was too scared. <laughs> so speaking of this wingback chair, this is our next find. Another one that I am absolutely obsessed with. As I said, we got it for $150. It is beautiful. I love this fabric. The cats are also obsessed with it. They are constantly climbing it, lying down on the tall back part of it, curled up on the seat. It looks so nice in our living room. And I'm just so glad that I, on a whim, decided to offer a lower price and the seller agreed. Moving on to the final two pieces, at least as of right now, by the time this video goes up, we may have already bought another piece. But the last pieces I'm sharing in this video are these beautiful, again, genuine mid-century side tables, a matching pair. We got them for $150 each, 300 for the pair, and they're in great shape. They each have a couple little spots of wear on the top, but nothing too significant. I love these. I think they're so nice. They are a really great size to sit on either side of our couch. These side tables just look so perfect in our living room and fit perfectly with a couch. And that brings me to my final tip of this video, which is to be willing to act quickly. This is something that I have trouble following myself because I am a chronic overthinker. I will go back and forth a million times <laughs> over whether something's a good choice or not, over whether that is the one I want to go for. I struggle with making snap decisions. It can be very hard. But when it comes to Facebook Marketplace, sometimes you have to act quick or you're going to lose out. Try to figure out for yourself ahead of time sort of what your hard and fast budget is, what you're really looking for, and figure out what pieces are pieces that you're willing to let go of if it doesn't work out, and what pieces are the ones that you really have to jump on and make an offer right away so that you don't lose out. You also sometimes have to be willing to pay a deposit ahead of time or go pick something up same day. Some sellers won't hold an item without a deposit or or will only agree to sell if you're picking up same day, especially if what they're selling is something that's high quality or in high demand and priced reasonably well. Sometimes that's not doable and some sellers will be accommodating if you are able to convince them that you really are going to buy it. You really want to pick it up, but it has to be tomorrow or the day after, especially if you're willing to send a deposit I found that sellers can be a little bit more flexible on that point, but I'm sure that depends a lot on your area and on the individual seller. There are definitely a couple pieces that are the ones that got away for me that I waited a little too long to officially make that offer and I regret it. So don't be like me if you know that you love something and it's in your budget 
just make the offer right away, okay? Don't live in regret. It hurts. <laughs> Obviously, with all that said, shop responsibly. I'm not trying to encourage you to spend money you don't have on furniture you don't need, but sometimes you just have to take the plunge. So that brings us to the end of this little tour around our home and all of our Facebook Marketplace finds. I hope you enjoyed seeing all the pieces we've added to our home so far and hearing some of the backstories on them. I also really hope that my tips were helpful for anyone who is just getting started on their Facebook Marketplace journey and maybe feeling a little bit overwhelmed and stressed. If you have any more questions for me, leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer those if I can. I really had fun making this video and kind of taking a walk down memory lane of the last six months of slowly curating pieces for our home. Almost every single piece of furniture not only has a story in terms of our experiences with it, how we found it, the experience of going to pick it up and bringing it home, but also that they all have their own stories from before we had them. And some of those stories we know, like with our dining set, the person who sold it to us told us the whole story of that set. Her grandmother's best friend purchased it when she was young and had just gotten married and moved into her first home and used it for a really long time as her kids grew up to adulthood and left the house and eventually ended up giving it to the woman who sold it to us. When she got married and moved into her first house. So I just love that so many of the pieces that we have have that kind of a history that they really have lived, seen some things, and that now they can live and see some things as part of our first home experience. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This was so much fun for me to make. As you can tell, I could probably talk about each of the individual pieces for hours, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Please let me know in the comments what other home related videos you wanna see from me. I do have plans to share our bedroom makeover in January. We're in the process of doing the finishing touches, but I'm already obsessed. So I'm excited to share that with all of you. But if you have other ideas or requests, leave those down below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed Plant Miss Day 1 and that you'll be back for Plant Miss Day 2 on Thursday. You can always hit that notification bell below this video if you want to be notified when that video goes up. Or if you're following me on Instagram, you'll always know what's new. And with that, I'm going to get going. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you really soon in my next one. Bye friends. Bye.